Hi, Dave here. Today I have a tour of the Intez MK63 Maksutov telescope. This was made in Russia back in the early 1990s, uh, shortly after the Cold War, and it shows signs of being Russian. It's very robust, uh, a little bit primitive. One of the things that I find charming about most telescopes is their elegance. I would not describe this telescope as being elegant, uh, but it is pretty interesting. It's very uh, strange in its uh, configuration. Uh, this is the earliest of the Russian Intez telescopes when they first uh, got into telescope making, uh, telescope uh, sales in the United States. And they made improvements to it, although they lost some of the charm by making the improvements. For example, this is a 6-inch F10 Maksutov. This telescope was purported to be for astrophotography. It has a guide scope, and I find this guide scope to be fascinating, absolutely fascinating. This is a 60 millimeter F about 14, um, 1500 millimeters of focal length. So that's a very long focal length. Uh, and the telescope itself is 1500 millimeter focal length. So it's comparable in focal length. Probably would have been a very um, suitable focal length for guiding this telescope, I except for the extremely strange and arcane way that they mounted the thing. The guide scope here, um, first of all, the, there's a focuser back here, a diagonal and a focuser, the guiding eyepiece would have gone here. The guide scope is mounted to the main telescope tube, not with rings, as would traditionally be done, and is a very efficient way of doing it. Instead, they have this strange little device. They have a pin here in the front, which inserts into a little metal ring here. There's no way of adjusting the metal ring. It's part of the telescope tube for the guide scope. And back in the back, they have this very strange arrangement, and I'll show you some close-ups of this thing. It attaches to the telescope with one single um, bolt here. And there are a couple of adjustment screws here, so you can tilt the telescope and aim it to coincide with the main scope. But it's very strange. It's also got an interesting right-angle finder scope, and this has a focusing device here, um, similar to the main focusing device on the main scope. This would be exchangeable, so you could put this on the back of the telescope if you weren't doing astrophotography and you should use it visually. However, this, when you put it on the back of the telescope, ends up being very close to the telescope and using the telescope is pretty challenging because you're bumping your head into the OTA here all the time, bumping uh, right on the on the telescope tube, so it's a little bit, um, a little bit ineffective. They later revised that, uh, made a longer setback for it and so forth. So they fixed that in later models of this telescope. It has a... This has got a drive corrector here. This is actually quartz drive, and quartz was a big deal back in the day. So it's quartz oscillator drive system. So you could drive the telescope, guide it here. These are guiding buttons strictly in right ascension. But you could guide the telescope and I suppose you could have done some astrophotography with this. Of course, you're using this is old time film back in the day, and it would have been very, very slow, so a very ineffective kind of a, a telescope for that kind of thing. This adapter here, I had to make this adapter. It didn't come with one. Uh, traditionally, they, they came with um, an Intez manufactured adapter for cameras. So I just made one. I made the right kind of size ring and so forth to fit on there. This comes off like so. And this will screw on here after I pull off the adapter. It's nice that the that the mirror does not shift. Most Maksutovs and Schmidt Cassegrains have a mirror that shifts when you focus. It's a bit irritating. This is nice, except for this. Look where your look at where your eye is when you're trying to look through this thing. 
it's really tricky. You're trying, an eyepiece might be right about here, and you're trying to look like that. So it's, it's pretty tricky. You might have to rearrange the thing and so forth, focus it here. Um, not too bad, and especially if the guide scope was not present, it would be a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So it's a pretty nice little scope, very compact, and let me show you how easily it comes apart. I don't think I've seen many scopes that were designed with this feature. This comes apart right here, so this attaches with a screw, like so. So now I've got the tube assembly separated from the mount. Both of them are nice, convenient package. Uh, and you can take this off, of course. I'll show you that later in a close-up. Uh, so you can take that off and store the whole thing very effectively in a nice little box. And it would have come with a wooden tripod. I wanted to show you the very strange and completely unique way they have of mounting this. You can see there's a little, little piece of aluminum there. There's not much holding this thing on here. Okay, so you can see that there is just a, a screw protruding here with a knurled nut that goes like so. This goes through a slot here. On the front is simply just a pin, and I believe there would have been some uh, material, some, some clay or something there. It doesn't really apparently need it, doesn't need it to hold it. Uh, this is enough to hold it in place pretty darn well. You can change the adjustments by, by using those devices there. I don't know where they came up with that uh, system. I don't think it's the best system. But it's uh, not bad. It could have been workable, I suppose. And here you can also see that nice, unique little finder. This is a close-up of the mount and the very fancy high-tech quartz drive corrector. You can change the drive rate here or stop it or speed it up with those two buttons. Uh, sort of primitive looking, but probably worked okay. Here is the, um, this is fairly common, very similar to a, a C8 or any of the modern um, devices, uh, fork arm kind of mounts. Slow motion here, lock here, friction lock there. Same kind of thing, same basic arrangement. Uh, this setting circle here is quite interesting because it's, it, it's a little bit primitive looking kind of strange. Uh, looks like it was made by hand on an old-fashioned typewriter of some sort. Very, very interesting, kind of arcane kind of a deal. I hope you've enjoyed my tour of the Intez MK63, a charming piece of antiquity from post-Cold War Russia.